Right. Hi, everyone. Um, I've got my uh, got my phone here, not because I'm being rude and looking at text, but because I keep an eye on the time. Hopefully, I'll do this well within 10 minutes. Um, so this was done um, three or so years ago, really. I, um, and uh, I wrote this with um, uh, Sam Hale, uh, who um, is an absolutely excellent sort of expert on historic building fabric in particular. Um, and is a fantastic photographer. So a lot of the really good photographs in this are, are Sam's, not mine. And we had some really fantastic input as well from the Brecon Society to this, um, which was very much appreciated. Um, and we have the support of uh, Caddo as well. But just, just to sort of headline this, I mean, this is really all that this is, is a framework to, to to, that sets out the stall, really, for an understanding of farmsteads in the landscape. It's not just about farmsteads, though, because farmsteads, like all buildings, tell you about landscape, and landscape tells you about buildings. Um, and farmsteads are a really significant cultural asset, a really important part of the whole cultural landscape, and they tell us uh, uh, very much about how that cultural landscape has developed into the medieval period. And different landscapes have different time depths, if you, if you like, different layers in the layer cake that can take you back. And when you look in a, um, in a, in a national, indeed, in an international context at what we have in the Banal Brachiniog, it is undoubtedly of um, international significance. I, can, I can't really think of many um, landscapes in Europe uh, with the exception probably of parts of Brittany, parts of the Black Forest, parts of, um, parts of Eastern Dartmoor, other sort of hot spots in England in particular where we've got late medieval farmsteads and landscapes that are so legible. Um, and I think this is really important. Um, and of course they tell us the story of farming and of farming communities, of people working the land along with an understanding of the, of the fields, the field boundaries, the shapes of the fields, um, and the size of the fields tell us so much. And we are really lucky here to have some of the most significant work, again, in an international context, um, on vernacular buildings. These um, drawings have actually been adapted um, from uh, some of the drawings by S.R. Jones um, and J.T. Smith, who worked on a very, very significant survey of uh, um, Breconshire uh, vernacular architecture in the late 1940s and 1950s. Um, and that mantle really has been taken up, in particular around here, by Richard Suggett of the Royal Commission for Historical Monuments in Wales, um, who's published um, his own book on Radnorshire, but has done some work on longhouses. And I'm just showing this slide because it shows us the building block of so much of what we have in the Banal Brachiniog, but also the building block of so many upland landscapes um, in, in the British Isles, which is the, if you like, the linear farmstead where the house and the working buildings are just joined in line. Um, and the the, the foundation of that, really, I suppose, is, is, is the longhouse. You can see how this um, is built sort of going down the slope. Um, the wide entry here being for the people and the animals to enter the house. The animals, uh, the, the cows taking a right, a right turn into the cow house. The people a left turn into the living accommodation. Um, and these longhouses are a fundamental part of the cultural landscape here. Um, and the the, the, the guidance just gives you an introduction to, to, to understanding um, how these longhouses have developed um, from the 15th century. But what's so remarkable is the fact that we have so many of these longhouses which, are, which are sit within landscapes, which are also legibly 15th to 17th century farm landscapes with their fields, which all had access to significant areas of upland common. Um, cattle rearing was a really important part of the economy in the upland valleys. But of course, that longhouse form continues, and, and it's, it stands in really strong contrast to the courtyard forms and to the houses which take on 
the farmhouses which take on sort of, if you like, the centralized planning of Renaissance houses where you walk in through a door in the middle onto a stair hall and all the services rather um, are actually pushed to the back. So that gives you a nice symmetrical feel and, and the farm buildings are built round a yard. So um, what we've done in the guidance is just give you an understanding of how you can sort of look at farmsteads as a whole, um, you know, how they work as a whole, um, because um, they are essentially the focal points of the farm landscape into which you bring the harvested corn and hay crop um, and in which you have um, accommodated uh, in particular uh, the cattle who are bedded down on bracken um, and on the, uh, and on the uh, results of threshing out the corn crop, the straw. We get very distinctive plan forms or layouts in, um, in the Banal Brachiniog, um, as in most um, of the upland landscapes. And some of the ones that are really distinctive are these um, scattered farmsteads. Um, we have an incredible richness of, of different sorts of farm buildings going back um, into the 15th to the 17th centuries here. Um, not just the longhouses, but uh, cat buildings for cattle, buildings for horses, you know, stabling, and so forth. Um, and this one, is a, it, 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 which is a, adapted from a, a survey of a farmstead at Patrichot, you've got this extraordinary range of building types, a cider mill, a, a malt house, pigsty, calf house, cow houses, loose houses, loose boxes for cows, pigsties, a dairy, goose holes. And so our guidance just gives you um, an idea of, the, of the, the variety of building types that we've got and the kind of detail we have, um, including, for example, the distinctive Brecon hopper window, um, the types of doors and door and window detail we might expect on a farmstead, um, and the sort of detail and building types. Um, this is just an extract from the page on birds. So you've got goose holes. You've got dovecots, which are high status. And um, this is just an extract from uh, the section on barns. Gives you an idea of the different sorts of barns we've got. Very simply, <laughs> a very strong contrast between the very large barns that we've got in the, in, in the valleys. Uh, the Ask, the Tui, the Y valleys. Um, these large farms with large barns, many of which uh, date back to the 17th century. Um, or even earlier, um, and cattle housing, which is absolutely fundamental to the character of farmsteads in the Breckens and absolutely fundamental to how the farmed landscape has developed. Some of these cattle houses, um, such as this one, dating to the 17th century. Um, again, uh, we've got very distinctive um, building types, such as dairies and cheese rooms or cider houses. An incredible richness of building types that we have in the Ban Arbre uh, The uh, guidance also considers the, if you like, the pattern language, the, the patterning of farmsteads in the landscape, how they relate to the pattern of, uh, of um, the warp and weft, if you like, of, of, of fields and routeways. Um, and uh, we're, again, incredibly rich. Um, in having the, the, the absolutely fabulous late 16th century Beaufort estate survey. So this is just a case study um, of uh, Abari Ale, which is um, uh, on the way to Krikal, which is a, a 16th century farmstead. Um, but again, sort of in, in, the, in, the, in the valley, sort of extended into this distinctive L shape with a, with a, with a threshing barn attached to the house. So not just a, a pure longhouse, um, but actually a longhouse that developed into, a, into an L-shaped complex with its own barn. And, and this is just showing you how you can use historic maps uh, to build up a picture of how a farmstead has developed. Um, and actually, I'll just move on to the next two. So the final two slides, just to give you an idea of, of the pattern language. So in the different Cronon, um, we have, and in the upland valleys, in some of the upland valleys, we've got this extraordinarily high density of 15th to 17th century buildings on farmsteads here, which are all marked in the, in the red dots. So these are all farmsteads which have recorded, I do have to emphasize the word recorded because you know, we know that they are, um, 15th to 17th century buildings. Um, and you can see how these are sort of within um, a landscape of 
quite ancient enclosure as well, um, with routeways going up to, through the frith into the, in, in, into the upland grazing, uh, the summer grazings. Um, also, as soon as you start to get out of the upland valley, you can see here with the yellow dots, these are farmsteads which um, have 18th century recorded dates. Uh, and uh, in fact, the, there's, there's a, le a lower survival of 17th century, except in this large high status farmstead up here. But these are, are farmsteads that have been substantially rebuilt in the 18th and 19th centuries and relate to much larger fields. In particular, up here, when you've got these sort of monster courtyard farms within areas enclosed um, from the, uh, the moorland as part of the um, process of agricultural improvement in the late 18th, early 19th century. The importance of uh, Breconshire is further sort of heightened by the fact that Breconshire had the, the earliest agricultural society in the whole of the British Isles, in, established in 1755. Uh, so you've got, but, but it's not a landscape like the Northumberland, uh, like the lowlands of Northumberland or much of Scotland, in that you've got these large monster farms set within, uh, with huge courtyard farms set within estate landscapes. It's a farmed landscape where improvement has, has sort of worked within a framework that a really is still very legible framework of 15th to 17th century farming and a farmed landscape. And this is just uh, around Clang uh, Hamlack, um, and uh, it just put a stone court there. And again, shows you the, uh, in the yellow dots, the, uh, the 18th century recorded buildings, and in the red dots, uh, the 17th century. And again, sh just shows you the contrast, really, to the, uh, the different Cronon Valley. So um, this just hopefully just gives you a taster. But I think, um, you know, Brecon's, you, you've got um, a, a, a really significant legacy of, in terms of the whole farmed landscape. It's a really significant cultural landscape. Um, and I think that hopefully what we've done is offer you uh, simply a framework for sort of getting deeper into it and use your own fantastic knowledge and local expertise to go deeper if you want. Okay, thanks.